Hi there, I'm Sarah from Thermaltake Australia and this is our motherboard how-to. In this video, we will break down all of the basics of what hardware goes where in your motherboard and give you some tips and tricks for installing them. The only tool you'll be needing for this is a handy Phillips head screwdriver. There isn't really a set order for installing motherboard components, but this is a general order we like to do things and the order we think is best. First, you want to start with your CPU. The location of your CPU socket is pretty easy to spot on your board. Our motherboard and CPU are both AMD, so just be aware that this might look a little different if you're running an Intel board and CPU. Each CPU chip will have some way to indicate which direction it needs to go in, such as the little triangle on the chip here. This corresponds with a triangle on the socket. Pull back the metal arm and then drop the CPU onto the socket with the two triangles lining up. Once it's snugly installed, place the arm back down to secure it. Next, you want to move on to your RAM, which goes into these slots here. Which slot you need to install your RAM into will depend on how many sticks you have, as well as your motherboard. Today, we are installing two sticks of 8GB tough RAM, which will go into slots 1 and 2 as shown. First, you push back the wings on both sides to allow your RAM to slide in. Check where the notches are on your RAM, as these will line up with the notches in the slots. Once you're sure they line up, push the RAM stick down into the slot. You should hear a little click, and the wings should clip in to confirm the RAM is installed. Now we're going to install something you might not have. This is called an M.2 drive. Unlike other SSDs, this one is installed directly onto your motherboard. The socket you're looking to install this guy in looks like this one. Sometimes they can be hidden also, such as this additional mounting socket we found on this motherboard hidden under a heatsink. This heatsink includes a silicon thermal pad on the inside. Installing the M.2 drive is pretty easy. You simply insert the side with the contact points into the socket, going in at a bit of an angle to make it easier. Then you simply screw in the other side. Now we're moving on to your CPU cooler. We showed you how to install an AIO in a previous video, so feel free to jump over there if you have one of those, and then come back here for the rest. For this how-to, we will be just installing a standard air cooler. The first thing you need to do is put in your backplate. For this, we recommend flipping the motherboard over and lining it up with the holes, sliding it in and then flipping it back over. It's much easier to install your backplate here before putting your motherboard into your case. Next is everyone's favourite thing to argue about, thermal paste. There is a number of different sources which will tell you different ways to put on your thermal paste, but I've always stood by the P method, so that's what I'm going with today. As you can see, you just simply put about a pea-sized amount of thermal paste right into the centre of the CPU. Applying thermal paste in a cross is also a very popular choice method too. Now it's time to install your cooler. Place your cooler directly on top of your CPU, lining up the four screws with the four backplate holes from before. Now screw in your cooler, screwing in a little bit at a time and in a diamond pattern. You may have to put a bit of pressure down onto your cooler as well to get the screws to cooperate. Once it's secure, you're done. Also, remember to plug in your CPU fan header here too. Now it's time to place your motherboard inside your case of choice. Today, we are going with our H200. Your main goal is to line the motherboard's holes up with the metal standoffs in the case. A good way to make sure they'll line up is lining up your rear I.O. port first and then adjusting your motherboard accordingly. Don't worry if you have to wriggle it around for a while, some cases can be a bit finicky. Now, screw your motherboard down. We are now quickly plugging in some of the headers for this case. This will vary of course depending on your case, but generally your USB 3.0 and front panel audio header will fit in these two ports here. For the rest, you're better off consulting with your case or motherboard instruction manual. Next, it's time for your GPU installation. Your GPU will be installed here in your PCI Express slot. Your case might not have any of the PCI Express backplates removed yet though, especially if it's brand new. If this is the case, determine which of the plates line up with your PCIe slot and remove them. Now to install. 
First, you want to push back the little wing like we did with your ram. Then grab your graphics card and line it up with the slot, pushing it in until you hear a click. Lastly, we're just going to quickly run through installing a fan and where fan headers go. Installing a fan is pretty standard. You just get a fan and mount it in an allocated fan mounting location. The fan header itself will plug into one of the system fan ports somewhere on your motherboard. These can be three or four pin headers depending on what your motherboard supports. One thing to note is that three pin fans can mount to four pin headers, but four pin fans can't plug into three pin headers. And that's it, your motherboard is basically good to go. Now you might want to look at installing your power supply to actually power it all, which we luckily have an easy to follow guide right here on the channel as well. Thank you so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you have any other questions, feel free to pop them in the comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one.